All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you so much to the program committee for inviting this abstract for presentation to the press. Uh, regrettably, our lead local investigators from Kampala, Uganda, um, are unable to be with us today to present this work. Agri Dabanji is a promising uh, PhD candidate researcher, uh, and Brenda joined him uh, in performing the field work uh, in Uganda. This study was uh, the product of international design, uh, with several of the co-authors also involved in other age of blood uh, research in the industrialized world. So why we chose to conduct this research uh, boils down to the fact that blood, uh, as the WHO now acknowledges, is an essential medicine and it's commonly given. And the whole purpose of a red cell transfusion is to deliver oxygen to tissues. Now, to be able to pull this feed off, we need to be able to bank blood. And banking blood means refrigeration, development of containers, additive storage solutions. And what's been emerging, as Dr. Crowther pointed out, is uh, some research that suggests some detrimental effects that increase uh, with the arrow of time. Uh, and so we've got storage duration limits of four to six weeks, depending on the jurisdiction. Um, but people are wondering whether or not that's too long. And if you think about banking, and your inventory richness, it really relates directly to how long you can bank blood for. If there is research that's going to lop off latter ends of storage time, this could constrain inventories, particularly in those parts of the world where inventories are very limited. And we know that to be very much the case in less developed countries where the shortfall in the availability of blood compared with the need is up to threefold. And so there are criticisms, interestingly, of the reassurances already gained uh, on storage lesion research. Three RCTs have been done already, looking at the routine storage duration of red cells and comparing those to what's been arbitrarily deemed as fresh, i.e. within the first uh, one to two weeks of storage. And there hasn't been a signal of harm coming from any of this research. And so the criticisms of why this may not be the case relate to the fact that some of the time, the blood actually wasn't needed and certainly wasn't dose standardized. Nobody in any of these studies directly reported the actual performance of the red cells. And the red cells were not necessarily given at meaningful doses within the containers of the human body thus treated. Uh, and in, indeed, sometimes there were overlaps in the durations of storage for each of the two studied groups. And so the other concern from our perspective was that these RCTs were conducted in high-income countries, uh, in high-technology care settings, with blood inventory wealth, and findings may not be generalizable to the other half of the world. And so our question was whether or not long-stored blood really carried the same effects and perhaps exerted more harm. And so what really needed to be done next in our view, uh, and this speaks to our study design, uh, was to examine whether or not longer stored red cells actually deliver oxygen, the positive function question, not harm. Does longer stored blood actually deliver oxygen to tissues in a manner not worse than shorter stored or fresh blood? And to examine this at the extremes of storage duration without overlap in the context of a very high dose need. Uh, and this, although funded by the NIH, took us to sub-Saharan Africa to answer the question. We're all familiar with hemoglobin as the red pigment that bestows uh, red cells their color, and it's our oxygen carrying capacity. Uh, in the lungs, red cells get oxygenated, and the whole point of that is to deliver oxygen to the tissues where the subcellular batteries, the mitochondria, use this oxygen for high efficiency energy production in the Krebs or citric acid cycle through oxidative phosphorylation. And we know that if you have insufficient oxygen carrying capacity for your need, you slip back out of the Krebs cycle and into anaerobic glycolysis, and lactate builds up. So lactic acid is an interesting biomarker of this insufficiency. And so to spell this out, hemoglobin, when it plunges low to the point of severe anemia, does associate with high lactate levels, normal being two, greater than five being very high. And so the question then is, uh, with blood, if you are introducing oxygen carrying capacity through new red cell mass, and you increase the hemoglobin, do you commensurately see a reduction in lactate to prove the point that the tissues are oxygenating again? And that's an objective measure which is more satisfying than relying on questionnaires related to symptoms of anemia like fatigue. And so in our research, we wanted to look at shorter stored versus longer stored, and we defined that as the first versus the last 10 days of storage according to the duration limits in Uganda, which would be 35 days or five weeks. 
and we used uh, red cells that were produced American style, emulating our standards here, which is to say this wasn't a whole blood study, but rather packed red cells as we would use, and they were leuco-reduced as well. For pragmatic purposes, this was all group O, so that anyone of any ABO type could be enrolled. And so we had the opportunity then to see what the increments in hemoglobins were according to storage and what the lactate clearances looked like. So this was a, we conducted first a feasibility study in 74 patients four to five years ago. And through this, um, pilot information uh, were granted the funding by the NHLBI of the NIH and enrolled 290 children uh, aged six months to five years over a two-year period, finishing up in May this year. And the standard dose here was 10 mils per kilogram transfused over the first two hours of care. And if the child still exhibited clinical evidence of profound anemia, either by still low hemoglobins or an excessively rapid heart rate as the adaptation to that, a second dose was given over hours four to six. And so again, our two arms were the first versus the last 10 days of storage. And our primary endpoint simply was what percentage of people in each arm got their lactate level down to three at the eighth hour. And the absolute difference to define non-inferiority was whether or not the performance of the older blood uh, was within 25% of the margin of the fresher blood's effect. You can cut lactate clearance many different ways, and we did in our work, and also explored some secondary endpoints, such as non-invasive measurement of cerebral oxygenation by near-infrared spectroscopy, and also looked at a number of clinical laboratory markers over the first 24 hours of care, as well as a clinical check-in on the child 30 days after transfusion. And of course, this research was cleared by the ethics boards, both in Uganda and in America. And so the children started off extremely anemic with hemoglobins of 3.7. And with the transfusions, essentially doubled their red cell mass. If you got a single dose, you got a volume of red cells equal to 60% of your starting red cell mass. And if you got double dose, about 90% of what was put into you uh, was equal to what you started with. So this was a lot of um, transfused blood input into these young bodies. The lactate started off extremely high uh, at a mean of 9.3, and two-thirds of that dissipated within eight hours of transfusion down to a lactate level of 3.1. And indeed, um, we were successful in maintaining an inventory that was, ex that was completely disparate uh, as far as non-overlapping storage durations. And what we found in terms of the percent achieving that lactate of less than three at eight hours in fresh blood was a 58% achievement rate and of course, the relative 25% margin of inferiority for that would have been 43.5%. So what we're looking for is something better than that. And in fact, what was found was that the long stored blood was certainly not inferior. It was east of that margin of non-inferiority uh, and performed 3% better, albeit with confidence intervals that completely overlapped with no statistically significant difference. Other findings included uh, the observation uh, and I want to remind the audience that these were tissues that were oxygen starved with no other reasons for the lactic acid buildup uh, that these children were enrolled with. In fact, the red cell transfusions uh, were able to help clear that high lactate level from the anemic cause alone. And when we looked at why the patients were so anemic, malaria certainly dominated as the diagnosis, but sickle cell accounted for 10%, more than 10% of the children. And these are interesting conditions when we speculate on the fact that long stored blood is thought to get stiffer and may not traverse the microcirculation so well. And so for diseases that are prone to this microvessel sludging, um, if there were, was to be an effect of long stored blood rendering cells stiff, um, we should have seen that. And in these subgroups, there was no disadvantage observed from longer stored blood. By every single measure that we explored, and we explored many, uh, we found that long stored blood was not inferior. This included clinical symptoms, vital signs, normalization, the correction of lab abnormalities, and even the observation of any adverse effects from transfusion. Uh, mortality was identical and low in the study. If you're wondering whether or not something causes something good or bad, it's always interesting to explore the dose response. And dose mattered not. Whether or not this was a double dose or a single dose fresh or single dose long stored or double dose long stored, every subgroup had the same effect. So what are our next steps here? Well, we are reporting whether or not stored red cells are associated with cardiac strain, because that's another hypothesis related to the effects of long storage and certain mediators that build up and also to um, characterize the changes in cerebral tissue oxygenation with transfusion.
Finally, what are the clinical implications of this research? Stored red cells demonstrably deliver oxygen to patients. Surprisingly, this hasn't been well shown by others yet. In those with critical oxygen need, as revealed by the restoration of aerobic tissue metabolism and clearance of lactate, and we truly found no justification to shorten the current storage duration of red cells as judged by their fundamental role to deliver oxygen. Uh, please stay tuned for the uh, Monday afternoon presentation by uh, our chief senior investigator, Sunny Zeke. Uh, and thank you all for listening. And uh, I understand that our, our paper has just been released online uh, with the editorial. Thank you for your attention.